So today we're watching the best community in gacha game. When you think of gacha game communities, it's almost always a mixed bag. There are great stories, sure, like the amazing fan creations, art, and content that these com- That is true, that is true, like my content. But anyway, other than that, to be honest, Hoyo Fair content is insane. I, at first, I thought that Hoyo Fair was actually a part of Hoyoverse, but then come to find out it's just, uh, it kind of is, but it's just a whole bunch of fan content that is made in one. Like, the things you can have these characters do once you get the models is insane communities create. But there are also many horror stories, especially when it comes to the most- Wait, what is this list of apps review bomb- Oh, okay, yeah, we, we remember this. We all remember that. unhinged part of these communities. The nature of gacha games with the heavy integration of real-world money in many of their mechanics oftentimes breeds communities that are hyper fixated on numbers like revenue and player count. That is true, because I'm sorry for pausing so many times in the beginning of the video. I'm going I'm to let it play a little bit longer, but mainly that's because people, when you spend money on things, obviously you're going to have an attachment to it. And then you put money in hot anime waifus and next thing you know, people are up and arms ready to fight. But yeah. After all, when players stop spending, that's when these games end their service. And with how sunk costs work, nobody wants to see anything that they've invested their time, money, or dedication into disappear. What this means is that many of these communities view the gacha games they play and their developers as something that needs defending. If the community doesn't justify every single decision a dev makes, that would be bad. I just want to say I love how it was all about Hoyoverse, and that is so true. Like this right here. Worst decision they ever did is it. is it was it could have been so good it could have been a W but they decided to mess it up. But what if there was a dev that did the opposite, a dev that openly welcomed critique of the game and immediately took action to make it better? Wouldn't that foster a community that's far more accepting of improvements instead of the many existing ones that believe that their developers can never do wrong? Honest feedback that's acted upon is how games get better. And Wuthering Waves, with Kuro as its developer, is a company that embodies that mentality. Today we'll be breaking down why this is the case, diving into how Kuro is setting the tone for Wuthering Waves and its community from the top down, how Wuthering Waves has fostered a community that's far more open to critiques and improvements, and how this mindset has already improved the game significantly. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Several months after the Yeah guys, if you're enjoying the content, please hit the like and subscribe button on, on his channel, obviously, and on mine as well. Launch of Wuthering Waves, ripe with its highly publicized issues, the CEO of Kuro Games, Solon, had some choice words for the player base. I think as long as you can survive, that's enough right? Besides that, love yourself alongside the players, love the game, and love your team. With these three principles, you'll be able to run a long-term gaming business. These heartfelt words were coupled with some of the best quality of life updates the game had seen thus far. With these words and actions, Solon confirmed a few things. Wait, it, it is equipped with a shooting model capable of launching destructive shockwaves? I, I, I didn't even know that was an actual feature. I just thought that was just like a event. First was that Wuthering Waves wasn't a game trying to make the most money possible through their monetization strategies. That's evident enough by the fact you're able to purchase dupes of limited 5-star characters in the store, the fact that the weapon banner is completely guaranteed, and the fact that the overall 5-star rates are higher than their competitors while having a significantly lower pity. Any person who's spent in Wuthering Ways, in comparison to some of the top games in the market, understands that they're getting f You know, you know, that is true, because, I'm, I mean, Hong Kai, Hong Kai been alright to me. The other two, uh, look, ZZZ was good the first time, now it's just horrible, I just lose every 50-50. Far more value relative to those peers. Second was that Wuthering Ways players knew that Kuro acknowledged and would actually listen to their complaints. Incredible acts of compensation like the massive number of pulls and free standard characters for the launch troubles had players feeling like their complaints were being heard. And what that meant was that these complaints were actually worth making and weren't being sent into a black hole, much like those made in other games. 
When Kuro led the industry with these sweeping updates to improve the overall experience for players, and actual industry leaders had to follow in their footsteps, this only further reinforced a constructive mindset across the community when it came that is so fire and that is so facts. Like Genshin really just started copying after that point. They're like, oh, people actually do want this? Um, well, let's go, we gotta beat them. Came to their suggestions to improve the game. Other communities were seeing how Kuro raised the bar and were demanding the same for their games. All of that toxic positivity bred through years of Hoyoverse games leading the market is slowly disappearing, and the end result is that gacha games as a whole are becoming a much better experience for all players. How that is true. Sorry for pausing a lot again. First, um, I'm gonna get my thoughts on what everyone's later because I do got some thoughts that I just like about the game in general. But other than that, I do want to say that it is true, like what he's saying. And also, I love it. I hope Webbing Waves keep going, keep being better, because that way they're going to make Genshin better. Because if, let's be real, okay? In the real world, if there isn't a competitor, the company could do whatever the heck they want, because they know most people don't have nowhere else to go. That's the reason why Genshin started up in the ante when Webbing Waves came out, because they know other people can go to somewhere else that's kind of similar, that has all the good same stuff or even better as us literally it's the same thing that happened in all games like look at sports games sports games don't have no freaking competitor because it's only owned by one people ea sports i mean so now they don't have to worry about nothing like they could make a trash game for an up for like what madden 28 and people will still buy it because it's the only madden that's coming out but other than that, that, that that's why i think have been the competitive and the and the thing is good it's good for us as well as players because then we could just like because we can capitalize off of it and we win so yeah let's go however this wasn't the case very early on in wuthering waves' release gotcha tribalism and that very same sense of toxic positivity was very strong back in those days and what this meant was that a huge number of content creators and players who had critiques for wuthering waves were facing the same kind of backlash that we had seen in prior gotcha See, I never faced that because I'm I was small and I still am small. So yeah. Gotcha titles. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at one of my older videos, How to Make Wuthering Waves Better. In this video, I highlighted several gameplay features within Zenless Zone Zero that I thought would be great additions to Wuthering Waves. Things like an expedited daily system that would give a greater reward for spending wave plates. Things like more interactivity with playable characters in the overworld. Things like adding more replayability to the elusive realm. These were suggestions that, on paper, weren't too unreasonable, and would, without a doubt, improve the game for many players. But how dare I say that Kuro did something wrong? This video got completely obliterated, with one of the worst dislike ratios I'd ever seen. People had some very familiar responses to these suggestions. Things like, Wuwa is an open world. Daily should take more time. You're just asking to play the game less. The elusive realm is perfect as it is. These were the same exact type. See, people like that don't understand how the gacha game. A gacha game is not supposed to take you all, all, all day to play. That's the first thing. That's like most gacha games are meant to only take about like probably like I say to be honest, like 10, 15 minutes tops a day, and then you gone, you do whatever else, right? That's literally how it's supposed to be. But I, I do agree. I do agree with him. Like at the beginning, Reverend Waves, like dailies was way too long to the point where I just stopped doing them. I'm going to be honest. I just stopped doing them. Type of replies we'd see to any suggested improvement to games like Genshin Impact. And when Hoyoverse, the developers, would go ahead and ignore all of these suggestions to improve their game, this only further reinforced the mindset that the developers knew best and never had to listen to their players. And what did Kuro do instead? They went ahead and implemented all of these changes that I had previously gotten raked over the coals for. They increased the way played daily from 20 points to 60. They added interactivity with playable characters in the overworld and they added more rewards and a refresh to the elusive realm. The developers are the people that set the tone for their game's community. If a developer refuses to act on feedback, that sends a strong message to the community. Anybody critiquing our game is wrong. See, you know why he was crying? It wasn't because he was happy. It was because he knew that the system that they were about to implement was going to make a lot of chaos. 
And that drives the mindset across its players that there is something wrong with people who don't like everything about the game. And that's toxic positivity. By implementing there, there so many changes and updates this early on in the game's life cycle, Kuro has effectively opened the door to a far healthier community dynamic where players and content creators aren't afraid to point out when something is bad or needs improvement. When content creators were running the risk of losing their communities or viewership for having any negative opinion about the game, that heavily influences the content that they create as well. In Wuthering Waves, that fear has been quelled, and it couldn't have happened without the actions of the developers. And now this one developer, Kuro Games, they're bringing this mindset of constructive feedback over to games that have had millions, if not billions more in budget, a much larger player base, and far more years of developer experience. That is true. It is based on the developers because as you see, when people was like being toxic, positive to Genshin, the developers didn't care. But when let's say that somebody was being negative against the game, developers themselves, I mean, Genshin just kind of like, ah, and then the community was like, ah, and then next thing you know, is a lot of stuff that Genshin needs fixing people. When people say it, just people just be like, oh, well, you just hate the game. And then it goes downhill from there. But at the end of the day, now they're actually starting to listen to people to a point. It's not a hundred percent, but it's like, it's like getting there. I don't know. I feel like, cause like other, the other Mihoyo games, I feel like they actually listen to the people when they have criticisms, they actually listen and they try to adapt to it. It's just, it's just Genshin. I'm, I'm not sure why I don't experience. Kuro Games has set the benchmark when it comes to a developer interacting with their community. And now the Wuthering Waves community is easily the strongest it's ever been. There simply aren't as many people doom posting the August revenue numbers. People know that it's a filler patch with slightly less desirable characters. And yeah, next patch is gonna go hard. I'm letting this be known right now. Next patch is going to go hard, especially when 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 that when that blue girl come out, GG, instant, instant going up. When when the, the the girl the girl that we meet when she come out instant going up like I'm telling you right people now. understand what Kuro is doing you can say a lot of things about Kuro games but one thing for certain is that they truly do love their players as always if you enjoyed this content please hit that like and subscribe button peace out all right that was a good video that was a good video though but uh let me oh and also go subscribe to his channel if god I, I never even heard of him until now if you've never heard of him until now go subscribe to him um santontas i'm not sure to pronounce his name but like yeah go go subscribe to him if you want that. um and also subscribe to me like i think well subscribers we gotta we gotta beat the pigs out here okay but anyway other than that um my thoughts on where wings is that i don't know for me it got boring mainly it's because of the way you gotta grind the gear I just like ways of grinding gear where you go into a dungeon and you just grind it done instead of like I've like because for them you kind of actually run around the whole world try to grind it here try to try to get oh this one you got to fight three of these before the fourth one comes out and if the fourth one not the one that you need or get the wrong stats you got to go grind more and you got to go catch them all but I don't like that I just don't like it me personally but other than that um yeah, other than that, that's about it. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to share the video. I still do think Weapon Warrior is a good game. I just took a break because of that. And I I do kind of play it from here and there. But mainly, I'm waiting for a new character to come out. So that way, I can actually make videos on it and play it. That's going to be so far. And other than that, uh, make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned for more ZZZ content, Weapon Warrior's content, EK content, freaking, freaking Cat's Fantasy content. It's four games I play. Four. Four. But um, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out here. See y'all guys later. Uh, this is a quick little reaction video that I wanted to do to this because I seen like a little bit of it. I, was like, I might as well just react to it, right? But I'll see you guys later. Peace.